Hello everyone, I am uh, continuing our discussion on uh, damped free vibrations and we are seeing the end of the syllabus in this module. Okay? Maybe in one or two sessions we may conclude this topic and uh, then uh, we shall move on to another module. Okay? So whatever we have discussed I have just listed uh, down here. So C is equal to 2 m into omega n, critical damping coefficient. Then zeta is only C upon C C. And if zeta is greater than 1, we call the system as old damped system. In that case, x of t is given by this expression. So you all are expected to remember these expressions. Sometimes we may have to start from this expression and obtain whatever is asked in the problem. We shall go through the question paper problems and uh, we shall answer them. If zeta is 1, then this is given by this. And if zeta is e less than 1, then the system is called as an underdamped system. And x of t is given by this. And there are two other forms of uh, this expression for underdamped system. So using, so every, every equation, all these three, please remember, we have two constants. So c1 and c2 here. So here also c1 and c2. Here c and phi. These are two constants, all because the origin of all these three cases we had mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to zero, second order differential equation. Therefore, we have two constants. Then, for this case, we went on the further to derive what is called as delta equal to 2 pi zeta into root of 1 minus zeta square, and which is called as logarithmic decrement. What is the logarithmic decrement? This is the ratio of xn divided by xn plus 1. Please remember, this is not small x, this is capital X indicating the amplitude. Amplitude at n cycle, amplitude at n plus 1 cycle. Okay? So this is the ratio. So this is what is called as a logarithmic decrement. It is the natural log of the ratio of the two consecutive amplitudes is known as a logarithmic decrement and that is a constant and what is the value of that constant which is given by 2 pi zeta divided by root of 1 minus zeta square these are the various uh, expressions which you are expected to remember which you, we may require while solving the problem i have just listed down okay so the first one 0 6 n is 62 and uh, this is one of the question which goes like this so straight away i am Taking that only. Define logarithmic decrement. Okay? So, natural log of the ratio of the two consecutive amplitudes is a constant, and that constant is known as logarithmic decrement. Further it goes, and show that it can be expressed as show that, show that, okay, this also is part of the question. Show that delta is equal to. 1 by n natural log of x naught divided by xn. So this is what is to be proved. Okay. So incidentally, I have made a small mistake in my previous class that also I would like to uh, I will show you, share it with you. Okay. So what I had proved, I shall show you in the, my previous class. Okay, so I know that delta is equal to natural log of xn divided by xn plus 1. Okay, I wrote x1 by x2 is delta, not x1, this is natural log of, natural log of x1 by x2 is delta, if n is 1 and n plus 1 is 3, so similarly, this is also equal to natural log of x2 divided by x3. This is also equal to natural log of x3 by x4, etc. And I wrote it as one natural log of xn minus 1 divided by xn. Then I wrote x1 by x2 multiplied by x2 by x3 multiplied by x3 divided by x4 etc. into 
x n minus 1 divided by x n. What is that? x2, x2, x3, x3, etc. Cancel and I hope that x1 upon x n. Everything fine. How many terms these are? We see this here. In the first term x1. In the second term x2. In the third term x3. So this is the last term. What is this term? n minus 1. So these terms are n minus 1. I wrote it as n terms. Okay, they are not n terms. These are n minus 1 terms. x1 to xn. How many terms are there? After first cycle, this is x1. x1. Okay, so x1, this is the first term you have x1. In the numerator you can see here, 1. In the second term you have 2. In the third term, 3. In the fourth term, so in this term is n minus 1th term. Okay, so anyway, x1 by xn. So now I, I shall take what we call as natural log. So and natural log of x1 by x2 plus natural log of x2 by x3 and so on. And plus natural log of xn minus 1 divided by xn. So this is equal to natural log of x1 divided by xn. So how many terms are there? This is delta, this is delta, this is also delta. This is actually n minus 1 times delta. This is equal to natural log of x1 divided by xn. So therefore delta is equal to 1 upon n minus 1 into natural log of x1 divided by xn. This is a small correction what I intend to do. Okay, the terms x1 to xn, how many are there? x1 to xn, they are not n terms. x1 to xn, n minus 1 terms are there. Okay, a similar thing what we have here. Okay, show that. Let me correct it and correct it there. And this thing, what is your post starting point? Delta is equal to natural log of xn divided by xn plus 1. So I would like to prove it. Okay? If n is 0, if n is 0, what is that? Delta is equal to natural log of x0 divided by x1. This is also true with natural log of x1 by x2. This is also true with natural log of x2 by x3 and so on natural log of xn sorry okay xn minus 1 divided by xn okay so now I would like to take say x0 divided by x1 into x1 divided by x2 and so on up to xn minus 1 divided by xn this is equal to what x1, x1, x2, 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 this is equal to x0 divided by x2. Please see how many terms are there now. Now, so this in the first term, x1 is there in the denominator. So, second term, third term, fourth term, and nth term. So, here in the previous case, I did not take x0. I started with x1. X1 to Xn, how many are there? N minus 1 terms are there. X0 to Xn, there are N terms. So therefore, when you take this natural log on either side, natural log of X0 by X1 plus natural log of X1 by X2 and so on like that plus natural log of Xn minus 1 divided by Xn. This is equal to natural log of x0 divided by xn. So this is delta, this is delta, this is delta, this is delta. How many terms are there? There are n terms. So this is equal to n times delta. This is equal to natural log of x0 divided by xn. So simplify it. And what is delta? Delta is equal to 1 by n natural log of x0 divided by xn. It is a question of 8 marks. Okay, it is an 8 marks question. I hope you have understood. Fine. So let me move on to another question.
another question. Okay, what is that? This is 06 ME 62, July 2009. July 2009. Okay, let me make space for it and read it badly. Set up, set up the differential equation for a spring mass damper system. Okay, fine. And obtain the complete solution for the under damper condition. So this I already have solved it. What we have discussed for under damper system, the same thing. Okay, so so I just write down the important steps. I shall not go through all that. I repeat the question. This is June July 2009, 06 ME 62. Set up differential equation for a spring mass damper system. Okay, please draw that system. Draw something like this. Draw this diagram. This is K, this is C, this is M, this is equilibrium position you can say, and this is the new position. And this is what is your X. And say that X dot and X double dot. This is the right. Okay, then make use of this and derive this. Mx double dot plus Cx dot plus Kx is equal to 0. So from this you get this. Then you are interested in finding out what you call as Ex equal to E raised to S. Okay, then you will have a condition substitute. Then you will have what you call as Mx square plus Cs plus K. This is equal to 0. Okay, then you shall write down what you call as S1, comma 2, which is what. Then you will introduce what is called as CC. CC. And then equate, you get CC equal to 2 times M into omega. Then you will introduce zeta, what is called as C equal to CC. From that, you will get what is called as S1, comma 2, which is equal to minus zeta plus or minus root of zeta square minus 1 multiplied by omega c by c c yes. so this is what you get so now what for what you are asked set up differential equation for a spring mass damper system and obtain the complete solution for under damper system so now you know that zeta is less than 1 if zeta is less than 1, then what is your S1? And what is your S2? Of course, it is going to have what is called as the imaginary I, I or J, J, it will have. Now you write down S1, S2, then you write down what is called as X of T is equal to C1 into E raised to S1 T plus C2 into E raised to S2 T. Then you substitute. And in the process, you make use of what is called as e raised to j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sin theta. And e raised to minus j theta is equal to cos theta minus j sin theta. So, if you go through this and simplify, you get that this is a question for 10 marks. So, the derivation, what we discussed, and that may be asked. Okay, so another question. Okay, I hope it's clear. This is from December 2010, 06 ME 62. So the subject title for whatever 06 ME 62 is vibration, 6 to the vibration subject, vibration question paper. But the, the content of our topic and the what what the question based on that is say therefore anything, any type of this question may be asked. December 2010, 1962. Derive an expression for oscillatory motion of a spring mass damper system given the initial conditions as x equal to x naught at t equal to 0 and x dot equal to 0 at t equal to 0. So what is asked is get the expression for the displacement 
derive an expression for oscillatory motion. That means we are supposed to get what is the displacement. Okay. So the conditions are x equal to what is x? X equal to x naught and t equal to zero. This is what I was telling. Initial conditions. The constants can be evaluated using initial conditions and and x dot x dot e is equal to zero and t equal to zero. These are for our initial conditions. The for these conditions we are supposed to evaluate c one and c two. So in this case, it is ten last question. We don't know whether it is for over damped or under damped or critically damped. So therefore, for all the three cases, we are supposed to do it. So first, for over damped system, for over damped, for zeta greater than one. What is the condition? We have written there. So this is why I told you you are expected to remember. X of t is equal to t raised to minus zeta over one into t. Into bracket c1 t raised to minus root of zeta square minus one into omega n into t plus c2 into t raised to root of zeta square minus one into omega n into t. Okay, so now since this is x is okay, now I also require x dot. Therefore, get once x dot of t. This is also a product. This is a function of t, and this also is a function of t. Therefore, differentiate it. The first function t is to minus theta omega n into t into differentiation of the second c1 constant. Differentiation of this. This is nothing but minus root of theta square minus one into omega n. Into t raised to minus theta square minus one into omega y into t. Correct now? So first, how do we get it? C one as constant. Then differentiation of this. This is same thing. Differentiation of e raised to n x. What is that? With respect to x. First, differentiation of this e raised to n x. Then differentiation of this term, that is nothing but m. The same thing what I have done here. The first differentiation of this as it is e is. Then differentiation of this term with respect to t, that is nothing but this. Okay. So similarly, the second term, c two into root of theta square minus one into omega n into e raised to root of theta square minus one into omega n into t. Okay, substitute now. X equal to x naught at t equal to zero. This is x at t equal to zero. X equal to x naught. The left hand side is x naught. Okay. Then substitute t equal to zero. When you substitute t equal to zero. And the right hand side, this e raised to zero, that is nothing but one plus into that x c one. So again, this is zero, therefore e raised to zero is one. C one into one plus c two into e raised to zero, that is one. That means from here, what do we understand? C one plus c two e equal to x naught. C1 into 1 plus C2 into 1 into 1. Correct, na? Substitution. Substitution. Anything wrong? Yes. Second question also. Okay, that is first. Next, I shall go for that one. Another one. So I have simplified this. This means what is the meaning of this? The left hand, right hand side is 1 into C1 plus C1 into 1 plus C2 into 1. That is C1 plus C2. C1 plus C2 into 1. That is C1 plus C2. C1 plus C2 is equal to x naught. This is one equation. Then in the next case, at t equal to zero, x dot is equal to zero. Go for here. The left hand side is zero. Okay. So e raised to zero. That is nothing but one. 
So C1 as it is C1. Then what is this root to put into bracket minus root of g square root of theta square minus 1 into bracket omega m as it is. Then e raised to 0 that is equal to 1. Then plus c2 into bracket root of theta square minus 1 into omega m into e raised to 0 that is 1. Okay, so here omega n, here omega n, here in here 0, you can cancel this, this, and 0. And root of zeta square minus 1, yes, this and this can be cancelled. So therefore, this is equal to 0, you can get any 1, this so c1 into this, c1 into minus 1, this is the but minus c1. Okay, plus c2 into it is nothing, c2 into 1 plus c2. That means minus c1 plus c2 equal to 0 and c1 plus c2 equal to x0 and solve this equation and this equation simultaneously. You get c1 and c2 in terms of x0. You will get c1, you will get c2. Then go back and substitute what is c1 here. And what is C2 here? Anyway, I shall do it for one of the cases and the other two cases, they are very very similar at what I say. Okay, so what is I? C1 plus C2 is equal to X0. And minus C1 plus C2 is equal to 0. Solve them simultaneously. C1 minus C1, 0. Then C2, 2C2. Two 2C2 two. Two is equal to X0. Therefore, C2 is equal to x0 by 2. C2 is what? x0 by 2. And what is C1? What is C2? C2 is x0 by 2. You can see here x0 by 2. This also must be x0 by 2. Therefore, C1 is also C1 is x0 minus C2 x0 by 2. This is equal to x0 by 2. C1 also is x0 by 2, C2 also is x0 by 2. I shall go back and by starting equation. Okay, I shall evolve this. So now C1 and C2, I shall replace them. What is C1? C1 is no more unknown now. How much? C1 is x0 by 2. So I shall replace this x0 by 2. And what is C2? C2 also is x0 by 2. Okay, this is what I, it means. Okay, I shall read the question once again. Derive an expression for oscillatory motion of a spring mass damper system given the initial conditions as this. Okay, so this is for what we call it as overdamped system. A similar thing, the second one, what is that? If for zeta e is equal to 1, what is your starting point? x of t e is equal to c1 plus c2 into t into t e raised to minus omega n into t. Then what do you do? You find out what is x dot of t. Then substitute t equal to 0 here and here and write down what is the left hand side and solve them simultaneously. Finally c1 and c2 you will get and substitute c1 and c2 in the starting expression and write out what is the expression. A similar thing for the third one. If g is less than 1, this is your starting point. You have c and phi, two unknowns. Okay, this then x dot of t, they are also the same thing, substitution at t equal to 0 and get that. Okay, I have not done those things. Please, today itself, you say and solve those problems. Complete it. That is what carries 10 marks and in the same question, this carries 10 marks and the other problem. So, in my previous class, I have done it 38.4 mm to 6.4 mm. Okay. And that also carries 10 marks. Okay, then another one define logarithmic decrement and show that it can be expressed as delta equal to 1 by n. Today itself I have solved it. That is uh, January 2010.
Then for free vibrations, this is another paper, January 2010, ME 65. For free vibrations at an underdamped spring mass damper system, show that logarithm decrement delta is given by 2 pi zeta divided by root of 1 minus zeta square. Can you see? 8 marks. Okay, all the questions are very, very standard. You don't have much variation. That's all what I have discussed. The same thing. Determine the natural frequency of spring loss. Sorry, it is not that. Okay. Then another one you can write down this. This is very important. Write a difference. Okay. You know, this is 06 ME 62 June 2010. A question goes like this. In a single degree damped vibrating system. In a single degree damped vibrating system. A suspended mass of 18 kg. A suspended mass of 18 kg makes 10 oscillations in 8 seconds. 10 oscillations in 8 seconds. Okay, full stop. The amplitude decreases to 25% of the initial value after 5 cycles. Determine so and so. Damped natural frequency, logarithmic decrement, then undamped natural frequency, spring constant, damping constant, coefficient, etc. etc. So many things. Okay, that's 10 marks. Okay, in a single degree damped vibrating system, therefore it must be the system must be like this. You cannot have a system without spring. So this is the system, this is K, this is C, this is M. Okay, this system he is subjected to, you pull this and leave it, then it is going to have the extreme this thing. So, so observation, the experiment is conducted. What is that? The mass is 18 kg, this is given. We don't know anything else. This also don't know, this also we don't know. Okay, so what we have? 10 oscillations for this system. 10 oscillations in 8 seconds. In 8 seconds, I have 10 oscillations. I want to find out what is the time period. Time period. What is the time required for one, one oscillation? Okay, time is 8 divided by 10. This is nothing but 0.8 seconds. 0.8 seconds. This is the time period. Please remember, this is for this system. Okay, this is nothing but I can say that T suffix T. Time period for damped oscillations. Damped free oscillation. Can I find out what is called the EFD? The frequency. This is nothing but 1 upon TD. This is equal to 1 upon 0.8. You write down. This is so many cycles per second. Then I can easily write down what is omega d? Omega d is 2 pi f d. This is so many radians per second. This is not just omega d, this is omega d n. Okay, this is one of the things what is asked in the problem. Okay, the first thing what is asked? Determine damped natural frequency. Yes, we have found the damped natural frequency. So this value is known now. So damped natural frequency is also given by 2 pi zeta divided by root of 1 minus theta square. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It is logarithm degree. So that natural frequency is also given by, it is not that, this is equal to, I uh, will then, 1 minus zeta square into omega n. Okay, so I don't know omega n because k is not known, no? k is not known. We shall wait it. We have one more information. So what is that one more information? The amplitude decreases to 25% of initial value after 5 cycles. Okay? 
So initial amplitude. So initial amplitude. So let it be okay. initial means at t equal to zero. So let it be equal to x zero. So after five cycles, after five cycles. So what is the amplitude? So I can call it as x five. And how much is this? This is equal to twenty five percent. Twenty five percent decreases up. The amplitude decreases two. So this is equal to point two five times x one. Okay, make use of this, and we are supposed to find out something. What is that? So delta. Okay. So we have this. One more information. Delta is also equal to one by n into natural log of x naught divided by x n. Here n is five. Okay. This is nothing but delta, which is equal to one by five. Natural log of x naught is x naught, and x five x five is point two five x naught. X naught x naught cancels. One upon point two five is nothing but four. Okay, so natural log of four. You know this value. That divided by one by five. From that you will find out what is this. So what is this left hand side? That is. Logarithmic decrement. This is equal to two pi theta divided by root of one minus theta square. Please see here. This value you know it. You have found it out. And equal this. So theta. So when you square this term and on the right hand side, simplify it. And what you get? You will get what is the value of theta. So theta can be found. All this I am giving only the hints. You are supposed to work it out, substitute and simplify. Theta is known. So once you know theta, you can come back here. You know omega d. This value is known. So this theta is known. Omega d. This is known. Theta is known. And simplify this, and then you will find out what is omega d. And what is omega d? Omega d is root of k by m. You know omega, n, you know m. You can find out k. K is equal to so many newton per meter. That way you find out. Okay, that is what is asked. Let me come back. What are the things asked? Tamp natural frequency. What is this? Logarithmic decrement. What is nothing but this? And what is asked? Undamped natural frequency. That is nothing but omega. N. Undamped natural frequency is omega. N. Then spring constant, that is nothing but k. Then damping coefficient. You are also asked to find out what is c. So I know that g is equal to c upon c c. You know theta right now. Okay. You also know c c. What is that? C c equal to two yam omega yam. You know yam. You know omega yam. Therefore c c is known. So c c is known. Theta is known. Therefore you find out c. Okay, I think all the problems, many problems I have done it. I think uh, probably I wind it up, and if required, you can uh, the initiation. If it comes from you, I I shall be very happy to continue the discussion. Okay, otherwise I shall start another topic uh, when we meet in our next discussion.